right, we have time for at least one more. Yes, Sandy. 376 in which hymnal? Red hymnal. 376 in the red hymnal. Oh, thine is the glory. Yes. First and third verse of Thine is the Glory, 376 in the Red Hymnal. First and third. do one more if anybody has this will be the last hymn of the hymn sing of the year anyone anyone 887 did you say 887 in the red hymnal right oops 887 how to get there oh this is my song oh gosh okay let's do well we're just gonna have to do the first and third verse of 887 this is my song in the red hymnal. Well, good morning, and welcome to worship in this season of Pentecost. Uh, welcome to all of you who are here. Welcome to all of you listening on the radio or watching on Facebook Live. Welcome to any visitors that might be here. We're just so glad to have you with us, however you are able to join us on this very, very special day. 
when we celebrate Carrie's ministry and her next adventure, and we celebrate that we might get rain tomorrow. Um, maybe, but it's a really nice day. Um, so I have a lot of announcements. I'm going to try to get them through really quickly, but please read through the bulletin because there's a lot of good stuff in the bulletin. Also, the newsletter that went out um, a week ago. So make sure you catch up with everything that's going on because a lot is going on. Um, thanks uh, to Pastor Lane for taking over last week. I had my last uh, vacation Sunday of the year and I had a wonderful time. Um, so as I mentioned, there's lots coming up. Each of the next Sundays, there's um, something fantastic. So next Sunday um, is Rally Sunday. We'll get all our kids signed up for um, Sunday school. Also, the choir will be singing for the first time. That's always a fun thing. Confirmation orientation is this Wednesday. Um, so lots of things happening. Um, two things I want to account, uh, call to your attention. The first is we still are looking for a couple of confirmation mentors for our seventh graders. Um, probably two of them. I don't know if any of you have ever been to senior recognition, but one of the things that our seniors always say is their best memory of Trinity is their confirmation mentor. So if you want to be that person for um, one of our young people, this is a great opportunity for you. Um, also, we are looking um, for a temporary leader for our Wednesday Bible School from 3.30 to 5 on Wednesdays. Um, we're just looking for somebody to be able to lead that, and it is a paying position, so please look in your bulletin for that. Um, like I mentioned, um, it's Carrie's last Sunday today, so there will be a special fellowship down in the basement. There's something for you to sign for her, lots of um, wonderful things, so please make it... Um, Make, try to make it down for that. If you look at your green insert, another thing that's coming up four weeks from today, Uftafest weekend, um, on Sunday, we are gonna have a very special um, celebration of Matt, um, Almore Matson's minis musical ministry here. The choir's gonna sing some special numbers. And what we would like is for all of you who have a special memory about Matt, to write it down, and yes, I know Vivian's name is spelled wrong, we'll fix that in the future, um, but write down your special memory of Matt, and then we'll have those up, because Vivian's gonna be here, and Luther's gonna be here, and we wanna really um, remind them of the wonderful legacy that that family has left here in Spring Grove. Um, one thing that didn't get in the bulletin, but hopefully all you council members know, is that council is at 7.30 on Wednesday. We just didn't get it on the calendar, but it's on the, um, the online calendar. We have a new missionary for a day, very exciting. Um, so we don't have the candle lit today, but going forward, our missionary for the day calendar is going, all the proceeds, if you um, give to that, are gonna go to the ministry of Nola Nakarud, who is, I'm not sure who she's related to. Is she? To, to Helen, so she's a, a niece, a, a sister, sister of Helen, and she has been doing wonderful ministry. It was in the newsletter, um, this last newsletter. So anytime somebody gives to the missionary at the end of the year, all those proceeds will go to support that wonderful, wonderful ministry in Guatemala. Um, some of you might remember um, Lola Rosted. Um, she's now Lola Gillian. And her husband passed away, her husband Gregory passed away, and she wanted to let um, everybody know that there will be a service for him this coming Saturday, the 16th, from 11 to 3. The service portion will be at 2.30 at Four Seasons in Caledonia. So those of you who remember Lola Rusted um, and Gillian, her husband is, um, has passed away, and there will be a celebration of life, and please keep um, them in prayers. And I think I got everything. Does anybody else have any other announcements? Boy, I don't know about you, but I need to take a deep cleansing breath. So let's take a deep cleansing breath. Let's breathe in the Spirit of God. Let's breathe out all our cares and anxieties as we prepare to worship. God is with us. Please stand as you are able. Worship begins with confession and forgiveness found on page 211 of your red hymnal. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, 
and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Our opening hymn is number 731, Earth and All Stars. our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Worship continues with the prayer of the day found on page two of your bulletin. We pray together. O oh Lord God, without your help, we mortals will fail. Remove far from us everything that is harmful and lead us toward all that gives life and salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading for today is from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 33, verses 7 through 11. God appointed Ezekiel as a sentinel for the house of Israel. Ezekiel must face, faithfully convey God's warning to the people. Remarkably, God, who is about to attack Jerusalem, gives a warning with the hope that repentance will make the, that attack unnecessary. Listen now to what the Spirit is saying to the church. So you mortal, I have made a sentinel for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. If I say to the wicked, O oh, wicked ones, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked to turn from their ways, the wicked shall die in their iniquity, but their blood I will require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked to turn from their ways, and they do not turn from their ways, the wicked shall die in their iniquity, but you shall, will have saved your life. Now you mortals, say to the house of Israel, thus you have said, our trans transgressions and our sins weigh upon us, and we waste away because of them. How then can we live? Say to them, as I live, says the Lord, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from their ways and live. Turn back, turn back from your evil ways, for why will you die, O house of Israel? This is the word of the Lord. It says responsibly, but we are going to read all together Psalm 119, 33 through 40, as found in your bulletin. All together. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I will observe it to the end. Give me understanding that I may keep your law and observe it with my whole heart. Lead me in the path of your commandments, for I delight in it. Turn my heart to your decrees and not to selfish gain. Turn my eyes from looking at vanities. Give me life in your ways. Confirm to your servant your promise, which is for those who fear you. Turn away the disgrace that I dread, for your ordinances are good. See, I have longed for your precepts. In your righteousness, give me life. Today's second reading comes from Romans chapter 13, verses 8 through 14. The obligation of Christians is to love one another and so fulfill the heart and goal of the law. Clothes make the person as we put on the Lord Jesus Christ and live today in light of the future God has in store for us. Listen now to what the Spirit is saying to the church. Owe no one anything except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. This is the word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel for the 15th Sunday after Pentecost is from Matthew chapter 18, verses 15 through 20. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus offers practical advice to his disciples on how individuals and the church as a whole should go about restoring relationships when one member has sinned against another. Listen now to the good news the Spirit is bringing to the church. Jesus continues, if another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ, and you may be seated. And grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Good and gracious God, you have designated us to be the body of Christ. When we are in conflict, let us be reconciled and let us love one another as you loved us with heart and soul and strength and mind. In your name we pray, amen. So I don't know about you, but when I grew up, I was um, very much a reader when I grew up. I'm still very much a reader. Um, and so a lot of times I learned how to, what a word meant before I learned how to pronounce it. Or, or I even learned, you know, if it might be not really a word, it might be just some word that the author put in there. So a couple of years ago, my nieces and I were having a conversation about something, I don't remember what it was, and one of them um, said, well, are we in agreement on this? And all of us looked at her and were like, Agreeance? Is that, did you mean to say that? Was that? And we were laughing at her. Agreeance? We don't think agreeance is a word, Sarah. But since then, of course, in our family, we use the word agreeance all the time because we are ones to, you know, hit where um, a bruise has already been uh, formed. But then it turns out, I looked it up, and agreeance is a word, actually. Um, it's a very arcane word. It's not used very often. But agreeance is actually a word that means mostly the same thing as agreement, but it's more like the concept of agreement. So you may not have gotten completely in agreement yet, but you're looking for agreement. You're looking, you're in agreeance. is sort of the step before agreement. Now, why do I bring that up? Because Matthew's gospel today is all about resolving conflict. And these parts of Matthew's gospel we call the teachings. This is actually in Matthew's gospel in chapter 18 here. This is the second set of teachings. And this is what Jesus, when Jesus is talking to the disciples and others of his followers about life together in the church. And actually, this is one of the few places where the word ecclesia in the Greek is used um, by Jesus. The word church is used twice in this time, and Jesus doesn't use that word very often. In fact, it's not used that often until we get to Paul's letters. So um, what we know about then, because Jesus is telling this story, is that even 2,000 years ago, when we just thought everything was pretty good up until Holy Week and the crucifixion, that within the church, within Jesus' followers, there were already disagreements. And certainly by the time Matthew wrote the Gospel of Matthew, 40 years later or so, there were definite disagreements within the church. And so Jesus is kind of giving a little warning, a forewarning about what to do in case of conflict, in case of disagreements. 
My dad used to tell this story, and I have probably told this story either here or in some other context many times, but it's one of my favorite stories, and it's very poignant, about um, a sailor who is stranded on a desert island, and he's stranded there for years, let's say 20 years. And then 20 years later, a ship goes by, and they see the smoke, and they go over to the island, and here's this fellow who's been stranded there for 20 years. And he's, he's made a life for himself on this island. He's built a hut, and he's actually he takes them around and he shows them um, all of the things that he's done, the paths that he's made, the garden that he's built. And they get to this building and they said, well, what is this? And he said, well, that's the church I built for myself. And it looks like a church. And then they look across the street and they, well, what about that one? And he said, well, that's the other church I built, but I wouldn't be caught dead in that one. <laughs> yes. So that's why I, I love that story because it, it's kind of tells us about what happens when there's conflict, because sometimes we're conflicted even within ourselves. And what do we do then? So there are several problems um, in, today's, in today's gospel reading. The first is that Jesus calls on us to resolve our conflicts. And interestingly, this text, chapter 18 of Matthew, this particular part of the text, is in our ELCA Lutheran con uh, Constitution. This is what um, those in the synods and the church-wide office would use if there was ever a conflict within one of the church bodies. And we know that has happened millennia. You know, it's, it wasn't just the Reformation. There have been conflicts within the church ever since. So what Jesus does is he calls us to be the body of Christ. And Paul reemphasizes that, you know, over and over. And what we know about being the body of Christ is that you need all the parts, right? I mean, an eye can't do what a hand does, and a foot can't do what an ear does, and so on and so on. And so when we look at this text, we, you know, we can see all those that logically, right, that Jesus calls on us. We should do what Jesus says and that it's part of our Lutheran constitution and we need to be together because, frankly, a lot of people leave churches out of conflict. But here's what I can tell you based on that island story is that if you keep leaving a church because of a conflict, eventually you're going to run out of churches because there's always going to be some sort of conflict, something that you disagree with. And like I said, we have known about this back 2,000 years, but even back even farther than that. The message from Ezekiel today was basically a massive intervention in the house of Israel, in the country of Israel. God was angry at God's own people, calling them to turn back. And not just turn back, but if you have already turned back, help others to turn back. Bring them back because God wants every single member of the body of Christ, of God's family, to be part of, of, the, of his own family. So God, this goes, like I said, this goes way back to is, uh, Ezekiel. But the tricky thing about this text is that we can get a little judgy sometimes. You know, let's say there is a conflict and you bring it to that person in some, uh, you know, in some way you bring it up. Well, how are you to bring that up in a way that's not judgy? How do you put out an error without pointing out an error? Because, you know, that, is, that like I said, who are, who are we to judge? In Paul's um, letter to Rome, he talks about how we are obligated to love. We are to love our neighbor as ourselves. We are to put on the armor of light, to put on Christ. If only, if only it was that easy, right? Because all have sinned and all fall short of the glory of God, as we know. We pray in Psalm 19, the one we just read aloud. Now, if we were able to pray that every morning, that would help a little bit, right? So as um, the, you know, we, we looked at what we read, teach me, O Lord, give me understanding, lead me in the path, turn my heart, turn my eyes, confirm your servant. Imagine praying Psalm 119, 33 through 40 every single day. That would be a pretty powerful thing, a pretty powerful way to start the day. And yet we know that still all have sinned and all fall short of the glory of God. We say in the Lord's Prayer, which we will pray in just a few minutes, forgive us as we forgive others. But it's still really, really hard. 
So let's expand the gospel a little bit. Let's go back to the beginning of Psalm 118, or excuse me, of Matthew 18, and see if it's a little easier. If God and Jesus gives us a little more guidance on how we might judge, but not judge, bring out the error, but not bring out the error. And so what Jesus tells us in the first part of uh, Matthew 18's gospel is be humble like a child, be like a little one, don't presume, be humble. Second, don't be a stumbling block to others. If you are doing something that somebody else is finds tempting and they're not able to withstand it, don't be a stumbling block to others. The next part is probably the most significant part. Right before Jesus goes into this conflict resolution portion, he tells the parable of the, of the hundred sheep. 99 sheep have made it back to the pasture and just one hasn't made it back. But the shepherd goes out and searches and searches through wind and snow and rain and whatever else is out there to bring that one sheep back. And then Jesus goes into the conflict resolution. So right now we know that Jesus wants every single sheep back in the fold and that we are the ones who are called on to bring those sheep back into the fold. So basically what we have here are instructions for reconciliation and reconciliation is so powerful. It is so important to God. It is the, the first um, and, and oh, let me just say too, it can be really hard to confront someone. Nobody likes to confront anyone, especially um, those of us who might have a little passive aggressive tendencies in us. You know, we might want to like talk to somebody else. Should I go talk to them? I don't know. Do you, what do you think? This is what they did. What do you think? Where it's actually best to be direct. It's hard. It's an, I don't find it easy either to, to confront someone, but confront is probably a strong word. Just go directly to that person. So what does Jesus say? First, do it privately. If that doesn't work, take a couple people along with you. People who might be sympathetic to you, but people who might be sympathetic to that other person as well. Make sure that you are a family in this. If that still doesn't work, bring it to the congregation. The congregation will try to support that, that sheep and get them back in the fold. But if all else fails, you might need to set up some boundaries. There are sins committed in, this, in our lives that are beyond the pale. And that does not mean that God has discounted that person from life. But it does mean sometimes that we have to set up boundaries, that that person can't be part of this family and might need a special family. When we look at this text, probably the most powerful thing and the, most, the one that we remember most is verse 20. Remember, where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there. It's a promise. It's such a big promise. And imagine if wherever we were in conflict with someone, we set a little chair aside and Jesus was there. We imagined that Jesus was actually there. And we look at these texts to help us get through it. This would be pretty powerful if we're in meetings, if we're in arguments, if we're in some sort of online forum that has got it out of, land, out of hand, imagine that Jesus is right there with us. Now next week, Jesus continues this, continues this ministry. And this is not gonna be an easy one either because it's all about forgiveness. And forgiveness can be really hard, but we are called to forgive because sometimes we are the ones that need to be forgiven. The promise is true. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believed in him would not perish but have eternal life. But remember that God came into the world not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, Bind us together as one body of Christ, that we might be whole to do your work for the neighbor. In your name we pray, amen. Our next hymn is number 716, Lord of all nations, grant me grace.
continues with the Apostles' Creed, which you can find on the inside front cover of your red hymnal. Please stand as you are able. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Remembering the caring and generous works of God, we pray for the church, creation, and the needs of our neighbors. Hold us accountable, O oh God. Show your church where repentance is needed and lead us in paths of intentional compassion and listening. Help us extend hands of reconciliation and care, especially in relationships with other Christians and people of other faiths. Bless our bishops, Elizabeth and Regina. Bless our ELCA partner congregations in Southeast Minnesota, South Sudan, Tanzania, and Colombia, and at the Southeast border. And bless this congregation and all our ministries, and especially our education ministries, which launched this week. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayers. Reveal your miracles to us, O God. Move us to cherish you as we behold the wonders of creation. Renew the seas and the soil, the forests and the creatures that live in them. Turn us to ways of living that seek Earth's thriving. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayers. Inspire us to lead with honor, O God. Guide judges and legislators, police and government officials to create and uphold just laws. Move us to treat all people with dignity and guide our conversations with one another. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayers. Help us comfort those who suffer, O God. Reassure, reassure any who are harmed by the wicked acts of others. Bring peace to all who are vulnerable, frightened, despairing, or sick. Guard their waking and their sleeping. And especially today, Lord, we ask for your mercy for those in our community, our congregation, and our families who are suffering in any way. For Steve Guberud, Judy Tollefsrud, Charlie Silling, Joyce Lee, Larry Ofstedal, Megan Miller, Carson Betcher, Helen Hermeyer, Lori Vestersee, Rudy Simon, Gloria Robley, Ione Selmas, Janet Fussum, Linda Newgard, Pastor Bob Stoskopf, Sharon Hansen, Nadia Wold, Lois Steele, Lisa Aquat, Linda Tollefsrud, Paul Morkin, Dawn Stone, Lori Hagen Jensen, Lucas A.J. Wistie, Mary Amundsen, Anna Bingham Yiris, Rachel Kransky, Sharon Onstead Johnson, Mavis Johnsrud, and Jennifer Wedman, and for all those we now name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayers. Awaken us, O God. Challenge and encourage your people to value the vocation to which each is called. We pray for all discerning new possibilities or changing employment, and especially carry. In all our diverse callings, teach us to love our neighbors above all else. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayers. Remember us according to your steadfast love, oh, excuse me, Remember us according to your steadfast love as we offer these in the prayers of our hearts, trusting in your compassion made known through Jesus Christ. Amen. And now we are going to do a special blessing for Carrie. Her family is welcome to come up. Any members of the education team um, are also welcome to come up. I'm not going to cry. You're going to cry. <laughs> Over here. 
Steve, why don't you get in the middle of all this and we are going to Yep, we are going to lay hands on you. Come this way. Yep. Okay. I swear I'm not going to cry. <laughs> Carrie, as you leave our congregation, we wish to bid you farewell. farewell. A reading from Exodus. The Lord said, I am going to send an angel in front of you to guard you on the way and to bring you to the place that I have prepared. Carrie has given generously of her gifts in music, teaching, and youth ministry. You were tremendously gifted when you arrived here, and we have seen those gifts grow and flourish. This congregation and this community have benefited greatly from your gifts, and we have loved you as part of the Trinity family, and we will miss you. But we wish you continued joy and success as you move to your new adventure, and we offer our blessings to you as you begin a new life with your fiancé, Nathan. When you came home to this congregation, we rejoice to welcome you into the mission we share as the people of God. In this community, you have come to know and to share in God's loving purpose for you and for all creation. God has blessed you in this community, and God has blessed us through you. We encourage you to continue to receive and share God's gifts, united with us in the body of Christ and the mission we share. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the work and witness of your servant, Carrie, who has enriched this congregation and shared her gifts with her colleagues and friends. Now bless and preserve her at this time of transition. Day by day, guide her and give her what is needed friends to cheer their way and a clear vision of that of which you are now calling her. By your Holy Spirit be present in her pilgrimage that she may travel with the one who is the way, the truth, and the life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Give her a hand. Oh my gosh, the things that we have done. She has done. And remember, there's more celebration to happen downstairs. There's cupcakes and cakes and a special uh, thing to, for everybody to sign so that she never forgets us. <laughs> and now, uh, may the peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share that peace with one another. Let us pray. O oh God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. 
Give us the light we need, awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end, bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. And now, gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, wherever we are, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now, dear people of God, receive God's blessing. May the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our final hymn is number 836, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. Go in peace, share the harvest.